What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power of Play with CJ. If you want to focus in as part of the, you know, how would certain top players fit in with respective teams? Obviously, we did it with McDavid and uh, Eichel with the Sabres. Now, I want to focus in how would Noah Hannafin, uh, Boston College defenseman, projected third overall pick in the draft, fit in if Buffalo were to draft him with the top three pick? Um, obviously, the end game of Buffalo's rebuild is, I would assume, to draft either McDavid or Eichel. It's not a knock on Hannafin. Um, and actually, I've been seeing out of the three of them, he's the only one I haven't seen play live. I'm watching him uh, Friday, so I actually can't wait to watch him play against University of Minnesota. But um, the franchise centers are who they're after. <clears throat> they have a good collection of young defensemen on the blue line: Rasmus Ristolainen, uh, Nikita Zadorov, among others. And um, you know, they look like the, you know the blue line's getting better. I think, I've actually been very impressed with Zadorov by this season. Um, and uh, you know, I think obviously Tyler Myers is probably going to be on his way out. I think that's a reasonable. Uh, assessment and uh, you know it's still kind of a patchwork blue line, but I think it's getting better. I think it's a little bit better than it gets credit for. Um, that's not saying it's great. Saying it's good. I'm just saying it's you know better than its forward core. I mean, the forwards have been atrocious this year. Cody Hodgson has two points on the season, 21 games. I mean really. Um, so I think Buffalo's not done moving players. I think you know a lot of these guys that are here now aren't going to be there when you know Michael Hannafin, McDavid, whoever lands there in, in June, but. The difference between Hannafin and the two centers is you're going to need to be more patient with Hannafin. Defensemen take longer to develop. It's just the fact of life. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not saying he can't play right away in the league, um, but you got to baby him a little bit. You know, Drew Doughty came in right away and played pretty well on a bad LA Kings team's rookie. Then his second year, helped the Kings go back to the playoffs. Was an Arsenal finalist, and then you know, as he helped, look what he started. It was you know one of the better players in the game, one of the best players in the game, I should say. Word that a little better. Um, but then you got guys like Victor Hedman. I mean, Victor Hedman took really his first four years of figuring it all out. Then last year, you know, really put it all together, and you say, okay, this is why he was the fourth pick in the draft, well, the, the second pick in the draft. Excuse me. And it's like, okay, now we're looking at like a franchise type number one defenseman. Um, you know, it's just it's the nature of the beast. I. I'm not totally 100% sure Hannafin will be in the NHL next season. It's not a knock on him. It's just going back to the things with, um, you know, defensemen and taking longer to develop. I, I think he could go back to Boston College. He could go to the AHL. You know, I think he could definitely benefit by AHL season. You know, maybe go up and down for a year. Um, you know, something like that because I think his skill level is so good that, you know, you got to polish him off and, you know, not put him in oversight too early and, um, you know, ensure he's in a position to succeed because, you know, if you're going to get a high pick like this, you can't, you know, waste it by screwing it up, uh, by screwing up his development. Look at what the, what, what the Edmonton Oilers have done, you know, for the last, what, seven, eight years. Um, you know, that's been the, the calling card of the, of the Oilers. So, you know, I think if Buffalo can land a guy like Hannafin, um, you know, let him develop at his own rate, don't rush him, and uh, I think you'll get a very, very special player at the end of the day. But, you know, again, patience is going to be, the, it's going to keep any young player, but with defense especially, I think if, if you're expecting this kid to walk in at 18 and, you know, start lighting the league on fire, I think you're, you know, I think you're nuts. But, you know, I'm curious to see what, what the situation is. I mean, look at the last time Buffalo had a highly touted teenage defenseman. It was Tyler Myers, and, you know, had a great rookie year, and then, you know, kind of this collapse since then. And again, I don't think he'll be there when, um, when any of their, but we'll put it this way, I don't think he'll be there next year. Uh, I think full scale change is still in order for this team, but I think if you add Hannafin with Zadorov, Bristolainen, you know, and that's you know some of the other guys in your division, that blue line would be really, really good. I mean, you know, you're looking at three very good young defensemen that can kind of develop and, and figure it out together, and then you know the forward core. I think you know itself makes some moves, but assuming Griffin, uh, Sam Ryder develops into a quality NHL player and. Um, you know, Greg Aranko does as well, you know, all those other guys, like, you know, the forward core would be pretty good, and they'll have a, a great blue line behind them, and just, you know, make those goals stand up. Still a lot of work to do, obviously, with goaltending, and then again with the forward group, but I think um, it'd be interesting. Again, I think Buffalo Sabres fans are clamoring, especially for McDavid, but, uh, you know, Hannafin is, is not a bad consolation prize, if I do say so myself, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's like this episode of the Power Play with CJ on uh, if the Buffalo Sabres draft Noah Hannafin. See you in more episodes for the season and beyond. Uh, later, guys.